Okay, starting with Qigong standing today for a change. Those of you who are seated are welcome to do it either way. Triple burner. Feel the breath move down towards the belly. Feel the length of the spine and the beauty of this day, the spaciousness of it. We have sun in California. Yay. Greet the sun wherever you are. And bring the sun down through three Dan Tians, the head, the heart and lungs, and the abdomen. This is said to be burning the inhale here as you exhale down to the abdomen. And you can use the uh, breath that we've been playing with where you have a funnel breath to really get your breath going, just inhaling. And then funnel it, funnel it from the lips. That allows you to begin to feel your abdominal muscles moving in, which sends the energy of the inhale expansion towards the Ming Men or lower spine. And if you can connect your nostrils to that belly breath, then you've got the Qigong breath with the tongue close to the upper palate, which means right behind the upper teeth. And the effects of the diaphragm moving down on the inhale and on the exhale, it starts to move up. Yes, and that's why the lungs get smaller there. Use your abs. Use your core. And from there, let's pick up a feather, bringing it up towards this side, looking at it. Exhaling down with a flat palm and coming to the other side of your side to side weight shift, lifting this back heel. And then the other heel. Using your peripheral vision, perhaps to look up as you lift it up on the inhale and drop it slowly on the exhale. The use of peripheral vision with your breath helps to work with the optic nerve and it helps to create a better vision. So play with this feather, using your vision to look up as the eyes roll up and the eyes roll down on the breath. One more. Beautiful. This is for the spaciousness in the ribs, the lateral connection that we have to expanding the body, inhaling. I've called this the accordion just because it needed something, but it could be just a feeling of expansion here of the rib cage and contraction. You'll feel it affects the belly too, and also the feet. Here you expand the belly and the rib cage, here you contract it. And all that energy, if you're using your abdominal muscles, is sending the energy towards the Ming Men at the lower part of your three Dantians. Good, one more. That's great. Now we're going to do knocking at the gates. Tapping your buttocks a little bit higher, your kidneys, and your lungs up here, the upper chest, right under the shoulders. And then tapping down your right arm 
and up the inside of it and across the chest and down your left arm and inside of it and rubbing the chest, rubbing up here, this wonderful collarbone area, just giving it a massage and going back to massage back here where we allow the shoulder blades to move down and we often hold tension right here at this collarbone, above the collarbone area, but right on the, uh, right over there, right on your shoulders. Head rolls to your right, bringing the chin down and to the right, up and around to the left. And as you reach the center, inhale. And as you reach the other side, begin to exhale. Clasp the hands behind the back. Good, coming back to center, go the opposite direction, left and around. Breathing in, breathing out. Letting your nose make that circle also helps to feel how circular it is. Good, arms out into a T, rolling the shoulders forward with the fingers, and then back. Coming down here to the elbows close to the body, but not tight. Just the circles of, that we make in Tai Chi Cha that's come from the elbow down to the fingers because we're using that whole musculature through there to make circles. Or you can isolate it in a minute. <laughs> so you can isolate it by doing this, forward circles and around, back circles and around. Yeah, that's not always comfortable for people's shoulders, so be careful. Good, now we're gonna lift the shoulders up, back, and down. This would be an inhale here and an exhale as the shoulder blades roll down the back. Feel the opening in the chest. And take the shoulders the opposite direction. So we just went back. Now we're going to go full. We're going to go up and then forward. Taking the circles the opposite way. And if you ever have trouble with one shoulder, you can just do one and isolate it. And then the other could be smaller, it could be lower, it could be higher. You know, you can play with all this. Okay, let's shake it out from the feel feet all the way up. And we're going to do some hip circles forward to the left right in a second one two three four forward side back side and a little bit faster now so we'll go one two three four one two three four forward side back side forward side back side if that's comfortable we'll go the opposite direction forward then to your right and around forward to the right back left probably doesn't make sense but sometimes circles one way are easier than the other way we don't really know why that is but it's true Body's often not even on both sides. All right, let's do it a little faster now. And the opposite direction. Good. Coming down the body, fold forward from the hips with a flat back. Take hold of the knees, 
circle to the left and around. And to the right and around. See if you can make it smooth. It's the same forward, side, back, side principle. Let's go the opposite way. Forward, side. Yeah, sometimes it gets a little rickety in one leg. <laughs> one way and not the other. Good. Now we're going to straighten the legs without locking the knees. Locking would be to totally tighten them. So straighten without locking. Touch your ankles. Come up through the shins, knees, thighs, up through the lower body, up over the head, and just extend there. And then release the palms down to the sides. And come into a prayer here. Open it up. Bring it down. Come back to that heart prayer. Send it out. And go the opposite direction. Palms up. With the inhale, palms coming into prayer, come down through the central meridian. Feel the expansion here of the inhale. And this beautiful cutting through of this prayer through the whole heart lungs area down to the abdomen. Very nice. Okay. I want to make sure that we do a few of the other things that we normally do. Buddha picks up the earth, starting up here, exhaling down towards the ground, inhaling up, and pushing up the world into the sky. Use your peripheral vision for that. It's much more fun. It gives you a feeling of power that you can actually push the world up. Exhale. Inhale. And one more. And let it go. Side to side weight shift. Really feeling yourself in rider on horse position where you can drop the abdomen just a little bit like you're almost sitting on something. But the spine is long. So it looks like this. Rather than like this. I think that's what you're doing, but I'm just checking. It's because the Ming Men area here, you need to use the tailbone only to feel the points from the top of the crown of the head down there. That's one long line. So as you move here with the knees slightly bent, but able to see your uh, big toe at the end, um, you're pretty safe with this wide position in the V. Let's do some grounding. Let's inhale to the heart and ground. Inhale to the head and ground. And inhale to the sun that was so bright today with gratitude for the sun. And now we'll shake it out once more. Always really important to let everything go. <laughs> Good. And then we're ready to start. Tai Chi Cha. And I think we reviewed Ho Hu Tzu, She Shi Chui last time. So I'm going to put it over here and bring it up at the end. These are our 19 movements and one pose. And we start with rocking motion. Exhaling down, 
Inhaling up to release the heels. Exhaling down to release the toes. Forward back shifting, but in the center we drop towards the middle of the foot and then lift the heels. It's sort of a, a non-balancing thing, but it's testing our balance. So it's very important that we move to the front of the foot, releasing the heels slightly, move to the back of the foot, release the toes slightly. And the movement itself of forward back will do that for us, but we don't want to overdo it. We just want to get a feeling of the connection of the breath with that. So this is your energy C where my hand is right here on my abdomen. And as I move forward and back, I feel this expansion here and the contraction back towards the Ming Men or lower back. So add that in with your work with the soles of the feet and then you really have grounding. Because the breath, the movement, and the mind, as we focus everything, needs to come into synchronicity. A big three, how many letters? <laughs> Four syllable word. Um, that is just simply means bringing it all together. And now we could begin to add the figure eight, which comes when the palms go up with the inhale turn over for the exhale and drop back down. The wrists have turned to make that possible. And if the wrists do this, they begin to get a very fluid movement with the palms. That's circular. Circularity being a very important part of Qigong practice. And Tai Chi Cha is under the umbrella of Qigong, probably more than it is under the umbrella of Tai Chi, but it's both, which makes it a moving meditation practice because of the slowness of it, the continuity of it, the circularity of it, and the idea of moving from the center of the body, from the inside out. <laughs> Although we used a Qigong warm-up today, essentially rocking motion itself is a warm-up, followed by another warm-up, which is bird flaps its wings. So this one movement that we're doing now can be done 9, 27, 36, any multiples of 9. When you feel that you've reached your limit, you go, okay, that's good. I got it. I think I'm there now. Are you? Let's drop down and see. Bird flaps its wings. Feet are in a V. Inhale the palms together, lengthen through the spine to inhale. As you drop down, you'll be automatically exhaling and let the abdomen pull in. Inhale and release. Release the heels. You're forward on the foot. One wrist circle forward. Beautiful. That looks so much like birds. And inhale and release. Double ground it. Oh. 
one more grounding. Make it as slow as sleepwalking. And as much as you can, begin to feel how the fingers and the palms seem to be in polarity to the earth or resistance to gravity. As you rest your palms on globes of energy and release towards your right foot a lot of energy so that you can release your yin leg forward from the left side around the platter in chest high water. Just a beautiful metaphor for what this feels like. Last one. Inhale to sink it through the earth. Shift it towards your left and release the right leg around the platter. Last one. Draw the foot back in. Inhale to release. Double ground it. Shifting towards your right. Left heel comes forward for around the platter variation, picking up a ball of energy at this left shoulder and releasing its center on the exhale, which has this way of sending the energy to the back toes on the exhale. And feel the circularity here as you move forward, carrying that ball and back to let it go into the back leg. Two more. And back to rest. Shifting towards your left to bring the right foot forward for around the platter variation. Your ball will be picked up now at this shoulder. Drop to center opposite heart and lungs and continue the energy back towards the back toes. Feel your toes in front as you reach here. And then as you move back, feel it in your toes and back. And feel the glide through the foot forward as you 
finally release the heel. And then glide back as you release the toes in front. It takes the body a little while to really receive the chi. So <laughs> when it does, you begin to realize, oh, there's a glide there. And there's a release back there. And another glide here. And a release there. So it doesn't happen right away that you get that release. Little things to begin to feel. This practice is all about feeling from the inside. <laughs> Two more. Last one. Draw the foot back. Let it join the other one in your rider on horse position. Thin it out a little bit in terms of the wide stance to be able to feel comfortable with your heels connecting to your whole body and double ground it. Maybe you can feel yourself breathing into the lower back. That's another thing to sort of begin to realize that we can do. All right, now we're moving into bass drum. So shifting towards your right. Your left comes forward and you're making a lovely circle that comes through the whole body here as you become the circular drum, a very big drum. Feel the spaciousness of the drum as you move forward and back with your weight shift. You breathe into the body and fill it up with air and connect to that air with your movement and your brain. It gives you the focus of this moving meditation beginning to come together. Feel the elbows come back with the abdomen. The expansion of the breath at the belly, the release of that breath as the weight shift goes back. All those moving parts are so wonderful in terms of realization that it's possible to move this slowly. Two more. And bringing the foot back to ground it briefly before we go to the other side. And shift laterally towards your left to release the right heel. The bass drum starts right here above the breasts, and it's always connecting through these central points of the palms as we move down, up, and around with that energy coming through the fingertips and the palms that face each other. Feel the inhale here. It's like touching the rim of a drum. It's velvet. And even let it bathe your face as you move the palms back. Yes, nice.
two more on your right side here. Last one. Inhale and release it into the ground. You're just letting that energy go for a moment on the exhale. And then inhale it again. As the energy seems to ask for help from the skies. And then turns over, feeling like it's received that energy. And it's moving it to the ground. One more. Feel that effect of the up and the down. Our next move is daughter on the mountaintop. The palms are open and they're out right from the, above the, the hips here. And you're gonna shift over towards your right as you bring the left forward and come up to the tops of two mountains on either side of a valley and come down through the central trail with the left hand behind the right. The so left hand signifies this is your heart in the back circle and someone else's heart in the front circle and you're connecting through both circles as the palms and the wrists cross. Feel the forward shift towards me and the back shift as you move away from me. Good. That gives you a nice glide in the middle as you move back towards your back foot. Great. Feel the breath coming in from the nostrils and the belly at the same time. That exhale is what's taking you down through the central trail. One more on this side. Bring the left leg back. Inhale to send the energy into the earth. You're at the bottom of the mountains now. Shift to the other side. And you're going to go up the mountains again. Inhale. Left hand will still be behind because it's the one near our hearts. For all of us. And the outer hand will still be your right. Feel the rhythm of moving forward and back as we move into a kind of evenness of the forward and back shift. And one more of Daughter on the Mountaintop. Inhale that left, that right foot back and sink it into the earth. All that energy through both legs and through both feet. And then prepare for our next move, which is its companion move, Daughter in the Valley. She must have been up in the mountain for a while and now wants to go back up through the valley. 
So here we go through the valley, exhaling down through the mountains and coming in through the valley. That's it. Cultivate the chi there through the valley. Three more. Enjoy every one of them. <laughs> it's like they're flowers on both sides of the valley for me. Bring the foot back. Single grounding between sides. We're moving into our right side next. So we'll shift towards our left and start with the palms up just above the shoulders here and come down through the valley on the exhale. So inhale first and then exhale and inhale again. You might want to check your shift now. Because as we move into parasympathetic nervous system form, we need to just check that the back leg is straightening and then bending, and the front leg is bending now, and then straightening. And they're working together in opposition, but together. And then watch your alignment so that the tailbone all the way to the crown of the head is in the same line. Beautiful. Sink it through the earth. Double grounded. Feel that breath coming in, filling the body. Feel the exhale, dropping that energy down towards the feet slowly, as if you were sleepwalking. And then preparing for your next move, which will be carry the ball to the side. A side to side weight shift. I don't know how much room you all have, but I've got about five feet to over there. So um, you can just moderate this for whatever your space is. Could be a little one or it could be a big one. Or you could start coming back when I'm going that way, <laughs> whatever. All right, now you're going to release your um, outside heel, which is your left. And your right knee is now the uh, a little bit bent. It's a substantial leg um, that has the bent leg. The other is a straight leg. And on the third one, bring in the feet, the other foot, ground it through the earth, and wind up again. And you're, you're kind of in a low position here with your feet in a V. I hope you noticed that. And then you're picking up this ball here. You're releasing this leg, the in leg. This is the yawn leg right by the ball, over the, under the ball. And you're going to shift over. And the shift carries the ball, but you do need to release it down to make that shift work. And sink.
And let's do one more here. Sink it into the earth, and we go back the opposite way. Winding up, releasing the heel, and moving towards your right. Feel how this affects your balance. So here you are. There's more weight in this foot right under the ball than there is in the other one now as we drop it out. And then that allows us to shift that weight over here. And we'll do one more here. It's maybe extra, but you've got any extra space, go for it. And sink it through the earth. We'll go back that way, carrying the ball to the side. Sink. <laughs> Rise to inhale, sink to exhale, and one more. Beautiful, really nice. Let's double ground that and we'll go into push pull and pulling in the energy next. Push pull. Shifting into your right, left heel moves forward. Use the heel of the hand to feel the push and the fingertips to come up and then come back with that wrist to circle all the way back to your heart and lungs. Your middle Dantian, bring energy there. Feel this beautiful inhale, nice. Very good, bring the foot back in, sink it. Shift it towards your left. Bring your right heel forward. Push, pull, inhale first. And then exhale forward and inhale back to the heart. Let's feel a little more, um, not circularity, but let's feel a little bit more extension out here as you inhale and you exhale back. Yep. 
you're exhaling back forward. So it's a little bit different. So exhale back forward and inhale back. Yeah, it's different from the other forward back weight shifts. It's reverse breathing. A lot of musicians have to learn this for playing wind instruments. And last one on your right side of push, pull. Exhaling forward and inhaling back. Sink it into the ground. Let's move to the other side, shifting to the right, releasing your left. Push, pull, lengthen through the spine before we start. Inhale, and now push. And pull. Checking the back foot, is it in a 45 degree angle? Make sure it is. That helps the balance on the back leg. Try holding the chest even though you're moving forward. So the spine is super long. Then you'll really feel it coming into the lungs on the way back. Three more. Last one. And sink it into the earth a couple times here. We're moving into pulling in the energy from the farthest star in the universe. It has a certain kind of companion effect to that previous move, although it's very much opposite in terms of the breath. This time the palms are up. Facing the star, your left heel comes forward, and you're pulling in the energy in a circle from the farthest star in the universe through the fingertips. So inhale into the abdomen and the lungs and the nostrils and exhale back. Feeling the lungs expand and contract. With the help of the diaphragm, that's what's happening. Here the diaphragm moves down to allow the lungs to expand. And here it goes back up as the lungs contract or your body contracts. So just an interesting thing to feel in your upper chest and in your belly and in your nostrils. And it does reach the chi into your fingertips. So this is a very important middle of the symphony move for me anyway, and maybe for you. Because we take all this beautiful energy from the star now soon into the taffies. So pull it in with gratitude. <laughs> One more.
And this is a visualization as well. So it's suggesting the idea of a star, but it could be any other special occasion that you really look forward to, bring an energy to it. Your right side now. The new year is always a time of special hopes and dreams coming true. So I like the idea of wishing on a star. And bringing your own energy to it to make that wish come true. Two more. And sinking the energy through the earth. Double ground it. Basic taffy is next. We usually take a little sip of water here because of the breathing that I'm teaching and um, the connections need hydration. If you don't have your video on, this is a good time to put it on while we're sipping water here. <laughs> And here we go. We're going to move into basic taffy, which involves sinking, rising, moving through heavy air, and resistance between the palms, and weight shifting. That's why it happens at this point in the practice, because we're ready for it. Left hand under right elbow without touching. Uh, your, your left heel is out to the side, and you're going to pull the energy between the palms, and inhale to bring the foot in. And sink. Notice how one palm moves up that was underneath and the other that was on top moves down, supporting the back leg. Yan hand supporting the yin leg. The yin hand connecting to the yan leg and facing up towards heaven.
as you resist that energy between the palms. It's like sticky taffy. Sticky candy that you can't pull apart. Two more. One more set. And back to home. Inhale, lengthen, just sink it through the earth. And then sink. <laughs> Our next move is anchor taffy. You'll anchor your right foot, meaning it won't move, and the other foot will move forward. The anchor keeps you on the floor back there. And then as you open the hips here and sink and then move sideways, then you bring in that anchor. But right here. And then the anchor foot now is on the opposite side, on your left. Square the hips and then side shift, really feeling those palms move apart as you reach the end of the shift. Nice, good. I think we're feeling the forward back much better than we were a couple weeks ago. So it just looks really great. Notice how beautiful that invite hand is as it invites you over to that side. And then you actually go there with your side shift. Sink it. Move it forward. Open the hips to inhale. Sink again and then side shift. Last one of anchor taffy. Beautiful. Now we are at our third, well, it's just, it's our second variation, but it's our third time through the taffies. And this one is circles taffy, feet are in a V. Sinking and rising. Notice how your breathing really makes this move. Feel that in your core right there. As your abdomen comes in, feel this open inhale and then the release. And then you start again. 
Lovely. And our last one now of Circles Taffy will come to a graceful conclusion. Sink it into the earth and double ground it. Perpetual motion taffy is next with heel step. Lift the heel and drop it and sink the energy into that leg. And then when that gets done, then you move to the other leg. And notice how one hand that's on top then becomes the bottom hand. Good, I can see you guys are keeping your backs really um, long and it really looks beautiful. The chest is open. And last one now of, of um, perpetual motion taffy. Sink it into the earth, inhaling towards the skies and exhaling towards the ground. Let's double ground the taffies, they're so wonderful. And now we move into working the pulley with your left hand coming forward, your right hand under the hip bone. One circle will go back, one circle will go forward. Left heel comes forward. And this is going shoulder to shoulder to you on Zoom. It's another giving and receiving move. Yeah. It's just a touch this time. Well, we're back shifting while we're doing this. So you're probably going to find that the front heel swivels and the back ball of the foot swivels as you cross the body at the midline here. And actually you don't have to lift the shoulder at all. So try it a little bit lower. But once again, you know, it's up to you. It's just that if one shoulder hurts, we wanna modify everything. And we used to do this move much bigger than we do it now, maybe because we're all getting older in the, among the teachers. <laughs> but 
everything is really designed now for the senior body, which I appreciate. And one more. Beautiful, bring the foot in, inhale to sink it through the earth. And double ground it. Working the pulley has come to a graceful conclusion. And now we move to our next move, which is light at the top of the head, light at the temple. The feet are in a fairly close V here with the toes out this way. Sinking down, bringing the energy of the light to the crown of the head. It's said to be the light of the Tao, all the opposites connecting through this light. Release it three times. And then circle the energy of that light. Hold it and sink and rise and let your light go. Into the earth. Back to your heart with your left hand. Sink it down through the central meridian and back to your temples, light at the temple. Sink and rise, feet in a V. Holding the energy and circling it. And sink and rise. And let it go. Inhaling it with the left hand to the heart. Sinking it down. Slowly. And now we come into our most yan move, most masculine move. So this is joyous breath. Inhale first, everything you got, sink it down. <clears throat> Inhale it up, bring coming to the balls of your feet and let it out four times. Breathing it in and then sinking it down the last time. And grounding it slowly, inhaling it and letting it go. Joyous breath has joined the earth. Passing clouds is next. Feet are in a fairly wide V now, and the feet are on the floor all the way through it. One palm is up, the other is down to support this yin leg over here. And here we go. And now the yin yang principles always applying somehow. So focusing forward, 
as clouds pass. Connecting through your central meridian and even the gaze is forward. And bring the foot in. Sink the energy through the earth. Inhale. Slowly. Exhale slowly. We next come to the six healing sounds. Left foot, left hand. Right foot, right hand. Second cycle, same thing. Third cycle, five chewies. Heel step. Turn the palms over. Mixing the energy of yin and yang, all the opposites. And bringing your left heel to your right ankle bone for cosmic consciousness pose. Inhale the circle. Left hand will come behind. Look through the window of eternity and over it. Elbows even. Interlace the fingers, bring them overhead in gratitude. To Wen Shan Wong, teacher of Jen, <laughs> Justin Stone, and to all of us who practice this beautiful Tai Chi Cha that came after at least 5,000 years of Qigong and 600 of Tai Chi Chuan to us in 1974 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tai Chi Cha. I think this is a beautiful practice and I'm so happy you came today. <laughs>